thank you for inviting me to speak. I'm going to talk about the root of the U.S.-North Korea crisis and a path uh, for peace in Korea. So uh, just to um, lay out some basic historical facts uh, that are important to know to understand what's at the root of the current tension. Um, first of all, the United States and North Korea have been in a state of war for the past 65 years. So what we're seeing today is nothing new. Uh, it was at the end of the Korean War in 1953 uh, there was an armistice that was signed, which is a temporary ceasefire, not a permanent peace treaty. And the signatories to that armistice were the DPRK and the United States, not South Korea. Um, and in the text of that agreement, it said within three months of signing this agreement, there should be a conference to settle this conflict permanently and discuss the withdrawal of all foreign troops. China did withdraw its troops, but that conference never happened. The US uh, still keeps 28,500 troops since then in South Korea. Um, also, the South Korean military is under the command of US generals. Um, the United States has wartime operational control, which means that if a war should break out in Korea, it's the United States that commands South Korean troops. Um, the second point to note is that the US has always maintained a threat of a nuclear preemptive strike. Uh, against North Korea. Uh, it had hundreds of nuclear weapons in the South between 1958 to 1991, and its war plan against North Korea includes the use of nuclear weapons preemptively. Um, it also routinely uh, exercises the collapse of the North Korean regime. So uh, what's important for us to know is that this ongoing war on the Korean Peninsula is not between the North and the South as many in the US like to say, especially the corporate media, it's between North Korea and the United States. Now, on the question of North Korea's nukes, um, since the, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, North Korea faced an existential crisis, both in terms of energy, because its fuel imports were suddenly cut off, um, but also the U.S. was um, exercising uh, regime collapse scenarios right uh, at its border. So North Korea turned to develop nuclear weapons, both for energy purposes and as a deterrent against an attack. Um, why nukes as a deterrent? Uh, well, simply because the North Korea is such a small country and poor and it cannot compete with the United States when it comes to conventional weapons. Nuclear weapon is the most economical and the most effective form of deterrent. North Korea has repeatedly offered to freeze its nuclear weapons development in exchange for an assurance from the United States that it will not attack. Um, so there were many agreements in the past, most notably in 1994, the agreed framework, where North Korea actually did freeze its nuclear weapons development. Um, however, the U.S. did not uh, follow through on its end of the bargain um, because the conventional wisdom in Washington was that uh, North Korea will soon collapse. And so the United States did not need to follow up on its commitments. Um, and then, of course, the previous administration um, practiced a policy called strategic patience, which meant no engagement at all. Um, and why is North Korea now a top priority for the United States? Um, as long as the United States was not engaging with North Korea for the past eight years, North Korea just kept on uh, developing its nuclear weapons. And now many experts say it is uh, close to uh, having an intercontinental ballistic missile that may be able to reach the continental United States uh, with a nuclear warhead. Um, this is why Washington is so worried about North Korea right now, and this is what they're trying to stop. Not because they think that North Korea will actually launch an ICBM towards the United States, but more because if, the United, if North Korea has a full nuclear arsenal and an ICBM, uh, it changes the U.S. strategic calculus in the region. It means that it's dealing with another nuclear power that is not an ally. Um, also, it, it challenges the nuclear non-proliferation regime. There is a double standard in uh, the U.S. Uh, stance towards North Korea because while it condemns North Korea for its missile tests, the United States continuously tests ballistic missiles uh, in California, the Minuteman III. 
After 20 years of engaging in negotiations that have gotten them nowhere, North Korea has now said denuclearization is not part of, uh, is not on the table for negotiations. Uh, it held its historic seventh party Congress last year, and it is basically now written into the national constitution that it is a nuclear power. So at this point, Trump has very limited options. Uh, first of all, military action is too costly and dangerous, even from a U.S. strategic point of view. Um, in the 1990s, President Clinton considered a military strike against North Korea, and ultimately they nixed the idea because the Pentagon came back after doing some simulations with an assessment that even limited action would quickly uh, escalate into a full-scale war, a drawn-out war, and lead to the death of one million people within the first 24 hours. Uh, intelligence experts now are saying the U.S. intelligence is very limited uh, on uh, the location of North Korea's nuclear program. The only way to guarantee the complete removal of the so-called North Korea threat is the use of nuclear weapons or the invasion and occupation of North Korea. So, the, so that risks a drawn-out regional conflict that would include Japan, that would include China, that would be very dis destabilizing, uh, not only to the region, but the global economy. So for the United States, uh, this is not a viable option. And for now, it seems to be off the table. So the Trump administration's policy right now is called maximum pressure and engagement. This is basically intensifying section, sanctions. Uh, continuing uh, military exercises, and it is trying to force North Korea uh, to capitulate uh, before getting to the negotiating table. But the problem with this is that this, is, this is, has been tried before um, and have not worked. Um, as long as negotiations are based on denuclearization as the goal, uh, it's not going to work uh, because North Korea has already said that is off the table. Right now, the only sensible path that many, even in Washington, are calling for is a freeze of uh, nuclear's current nuclear weapon, uh, North Korea's nuclear weapons program uh, in exchange for the United States ending its war games, uh, abandoning, abandoning its U.S. nuclear first uh, strike prerogative, and also reaching a fundamental resolution to the ongoing conflict by signing a peace treaty uh, that brings closure to the Korean War, and then finally withdrawing U.S. troops uh, from the Korean Peninsula. I just, I just want to end with one last point, which is that I have had many discussions with progressives in the United States that characterize North Korea as a belligerent for testing missiles and having nuclear weapons. Um, but, you know, Brother Ajamu said last night very articulately that we stand for peace, but not without justice. And I, I agree with him wholeheartedly that we cannot talk about peace if the notion of peace is based on another people's subjugation. Um, you know, I, I pose the question, uh, if North Korea stopped testing missiles and gave up its nuclear weapons, does that truly mean peace? For the North Korean people, they have lived under U.S. sanctions for almost seven decades and the constant fear of a U.S. military attack. And for North Korea, justice would mean decolonization of the Korean Peninsula and the right to sovereignty. After 20 years of negotiating with Americans, it seems that North Korea has come to the conclusion that the only thing that the United States responds to is might and that the only reason it hasn't gone down the route of Libya or Iraq is because it has nuclear weapons. And so what the question that I would like to pose as I end my presentation is what would it actually take for us to create the conditions so that North Korea does not have to resort to missile tests and nuclear weapons to defend its sovereignty? Thank you.